Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast. Today, we have a very special episode planned. As our beloved Red is off on a trip to Texas and is unavailable, we've decided to take this opportunity to have a guest appearance slash interview with a kit-bashing and green stuff master and good friend of ours, Emmanuel of the Lions. Hello. So, without further ado, I have once again been locked in a room with a vertically challenged Swede, an Italian green stuff legend, and a man whose inability to drive safely is so profound that one day he's soon likely to eat a tree. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm your host, Tom. I'm a vegetarian. Yes. And these are my co-hosts. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. My name is Lucas, or better known as Moots. Hello, I'm Joe Rogan. I'm here with the fakest Italian known to man. He eats dry pasta out the packet. <laughs> <laughs> hello, I'm Emmanuel, and I can drive. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Touché. Touché. All right. So instead of doing a typical sort of interview style thing today... Uh, we've decided to bring Emmanuel on for our news segment, of which we're just going to quickly go over some of the stuff in the Leviathan box and our thoughts and views, and then we'll jump on to actually picking Emmanuel's brain and hopefully learn a little bit more about eating green stuff. I'm going to show you with you my secret enzymes to consume green stuff properly. <laughs> I would love that. So we're just going to go over the models sort of one by one really quickly. You're not spend too much time on any of them except for the ones we really like. Uh, we've got the overview here. It's probably worth uh, first mentioning that Emmanuel actually went to uh, Warhammer Fest a few weeks ago. Lucky bastard. <laughs> it was an awesome experience, but the best thing, uh, especially for this new segment, was to see in person Leviathan box set models. Um, of course, a few uh, meters away due to the crowd of people um, <laughs> all around the, the, the explosion. But, but besides that... There were absolutely outstanding models, um, yeah. properly painted and, most importantly, properly scaled. So if you have doubts on scale, there will be probably images now on, on, on the monitor and you will see exactly how, <laughs> how, much, how much of the difference you have from a pyre blaster to the Terminator Captain. Yes, and we'll, we'll, start, we'll start here. Uh, curiously enough, these pictures that we're looking at now are the studio photos of the exact models you got to see. <laughs> so you'd have seen this this captain right here. You'd have actually seen him in person as he was. Yep. Mm. John Captain Terminator himself. I'm probably going to change my mind over the next few minutes which, which one of the lot was my favourite. So I'm going to start with this one and say he's my favourite. <laughs> uh, I, I, I absolutely love how fucking huge he is. And I love that he's on a 50 mil base. L large and in charge. Yep. God damn. Mm. He's, he's absolutely colossal. I really want to see him as soon as possible scaled next to Abaddon. Because Abaddon's on a 60 mil oh. base, but he doesn't quite fill it out all the way. So I imagine these two will be very similar in stature. That's weird. Hmm. That's, that's, that's weird. A, yeah. Considering uh, Abaddon's supposed to mirror Gilliman. That's really fucking yeah. weird. Yeah, I'm not sure I, how I like that idea that they would match Abaddon in size. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, he has a bigger profile all in all because of uh, the different things sticking out and all of that. But the, the claw uh, of yeah, horror being no, one of them. very much. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, but as uh, Aaron says, it um, it would it would kind of diminish uh, Abaddon uh, in stature if uh, if they did uh, match up. Well, all in all, mind, though, all, all in all, though, I really like this model. Absolutely, way. absolutely. Well, keep in mind, this guy's juiced up quite a bit by the very large tactical rock and tactical dead <laughs> terrain. <laughs> 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 to, to be to be fair with scale, Abaddon is just like him in uh, in terms of uh, physique and uh, Terminator armor. They both wear Terminator armor, so for them to be roughly the same height or maybe the same stature, you know. It shouldn't be that much of a stretch, even though yeah. Abaddon is a world master and this guy is just a fucking ultramarine. But the point is, they are both in Terminator armor. Well, it's 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 more so the argument of uh, you know lore reasons. I mean, Abaddon has been juiced up by chaos powers for God knows how many mm, years, he drank well, the ten chaos thousand years, and he he <laughs> sure did, uh, and or whatever the hell. The, the fucking concussion he brewed in his uh, little uh, <laughs> lab. Ah. What was it? Fuck. The Baja Blast. Mo yes. mo <laughs> mo uh, I, ca I can't remember exactly what it was, but motor oil, children's tears, and uh, something else. <laughs> Delicious. I highly suspect that 
Abaddon will still eke out a bit more scale than this guy in every direction. So it won't. Mm -hmm. it, that will still be there. I wouldn't worry too much about Abaddon that. Abaddon will also still like, suplex this guy through a table easily, stats-wise, I'd imagine. Yes. <laughs> imagine it would even itself out. I would imagine so too. Anyways, let's move on to the librarian. The biggest um, controversy I'm gonna... in the box. Well, no, it'll, this is strange because some people love him and some people hate him. I, I, I don't actually feel too inclined to either of those, but I will say what Red would say if he was here. Uh, he looks his runes on him look straight out of World of Warcraft. And he does look <laughs> straight out of World of Warcraft. He does, yeah, he does. He does. He's he's a, he's a World of Warcraft character, and that's why that, that's the biggest like peeve I have uh, against this. It's. But but al although to be fair, I remembered I shat on it pretty hard uh, when I saw it in the trailer. <laughs> but uh, and and you quite uh, you, you said something in the lines of wait until you see the mini, and I do like it more yeah. in the mini form. Me too. But but it is it is slightly over designed. See see, I prefer him in the trailer because I think he looks a lot better in the trailer. This guy, he just seems he just seems a bit off. He's very unique and non sort of normal Terminator Chaos not Chaos Space Marine. But all I can imagine him being perfect as is uh Horace Heresy word uh, word bearer's like Praetor in Terminator armor. He's already got the runes and shit on him, he's already got that whole sort of aesthetic going from just imagine him in that sort of burgundy. The funniest thing about this uh, character in the trailer that is just Spawn in, teleport in against the Tyranids, uh, look up at a, um, I don't know, Zorantrop or something, and just straight up fucking die. So it's the funniest <laughs> shit ever. Just <laughs> shooting down lightning, and then his brain fucking melts. Shit hard, die fast. <laughs> I really, really like this one. I know a lot of people are a bit sort of on the edge about how his rules are going to come out, but I think Gravis needs more HQs because we've got like three different flavors of Gravis Captain um, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And no I'm Gravis right. Lieutenant despite having something like 12 different Primaris Lieutenants. Um, and I feel like this is a really good addition to the sort of Gravis roster. I absolutely love this guy. He's my favorite in the box. And yeah. um, I, he is, uh... Gravis is my favorite armor mark anyway, so we're a little bit biased. But now I can run an mm. entirely Gravis army which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you can. I have the aggressors already. I don't like Gravis that much, but I I cannot wait for a librarian Gravis to drop. Yeah, I don't like you that much, man. All right? <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut up, you do. Bastard. I think we can all safely skip over this Phobos lieutenant, since we, we actually reviewed him in quite a lot of depth uh, two episodes ago, and you guys can go yes. see that. Uh, on the channel, we did uh, a whole breakdown of the trailer. We, we we had some good thoughts about this guy and some some things we changed, but generally speaking, it's it's not bad, and we love all the Tyranid stuff on him. Is that about right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But he's a lieutenant. He doesn't deserve this respect. I didn't realize he was in the box. <laughs> um, I didn't see him in the overcast, which I guess is a classic for Phobos. Yeah. But no, he's a Phobos lieutenant. He's not a normal one. So I guess he, he's a bit more unique than just the Primaris one. These guys have had an awful lot of controversy surrounding them in relation to the old Stern Guard getting benched. However, in the nature of benching, I'd like to bench that controversy for a minute and just focus <laughs> on the models. Uh, because these models on their own, I really like. I know I'm not a huge fan of Monopose, and I'm not a huge fan of them being Monopose, um, but mm. I'm, I'm really glad we finally get to see more Primaris combi weapons. I mean, we've had some Primaris combi weapons in the past, um, but looking at the Plasma, looking at the Melter, it's great. Although the Plasma... I'll put a zoomed in photo on the screen now. The plasma is extremely goofy. That iron sight is a complete waste of time. I don't know why the bolter is on the top and the plasma is on the bottom. It would have been a much cooler model if it were the other way around, but uh, GW gonna GW. Um, am I am I seeing that correctly? That it's am I seeing that correctly? That there's a the drum mag is on top. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes, you what are. What the hell? Yeah, the drum mag is on top, so if he tried to look down the iron sight for some bizarre reason, <laughs> he would be wasting his time. Ah, that's so funny! <laughs> oh my god! What? 
That's that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. My, my favorite details about this squad is the Cookstaminatus on the chest of the. I was about to do that same thing. Uh, left one. Mm. I I I fucking despise the Imperialis, the uh, winged scalp <laughs> on the the Primaris because it's just so fucking boring already. God damn! Yeah. Give me a fucking double-headed Aquila or something else. There was a lieutenant a little while ago that had the double-headed Aquila, and I almost got him for that ex express reason. The Black Templars have the cool shield one in the center, which is fucking sick as well. Yeah, it, they yep. do. But they are Black Templars. I, I would really like to have a new intercessor box with just a bunch mm -hmm. of different sources. The second yeah. detail I love the most is the Mark 7 helmet on the right bottom one. Um, yes. Also, I must share uh, info real quick about uh, to you all. Um, Primaris with the old uh, first born helmets were already a thing at the beginning of 9th edition because there was an artwork of Black Templars doing Black Templar shit, mm -hmm. just chopping around heretics, with a Mark 7 already in the... Um, um, in the manual of the uh, night edition, so it was already a thing before. But this kit officially canonized that, which is great. I'll go fishing for that art and get that on the screen now Absolutely. as well. I think these guys look so fucking nice with these super crisp sort of styled bolters. If you see what I mean on them, when you look at them and it's a bit more sort of sharp shapes. Like the heavy bolter there looks super modern, but still looks classic because it's got the fat barrel. It's got the little um, inquisitorial logo slash uh, terminal thing on the side of it but it's just so, such a nice little update to modernize the old style bolter i love it right we are gonna really quickly gloss over these guys because again we did a we did a foot when the trailer dropped, we got all the knows pictures these of these exist. I, everyone knows about these fucking guys but these guys are amazing we can all agree that they're amazing so for me these uh have got to be the most disappointing thing in the kit I just find them extremely boring. Although, I, someone's going to tell me that that's the point, and I get that. <laughs> um, it's just we've already, we technically already had the preview with the Black Templar Flamer guy that everyone said. So, with the exception of some slightly new poses, there's not really a lot going on here. Just a different shade of intercessor. Obviously, I'm, I play Salamanders. I'm a big fan of these guys. But um, I'm a, I adore that guy's knife pose in the center. I think that's super dynamic. Uh, yeah, I, I really like that but other than that they're all so samey i don't know i'm not not a huge fan either if uh, I, i'm sure that some kit bashers as <laughs> emmanuel is gonna make uh, a great work with that so next up we have the, the ballista dreadnought um i don't like it I his like legs it. his legs are super goofy it's uh, <laughs> yeah why he is he he looks gangly as hell he, why he don't so damn tall? <laughs> well, this is the thing. He, it's it's okay that he's tall. One of the things they could have done to have fixed a lot of the issues this model had. I mean, there's two things they could have done. There was no reason. I mean, yes, I know it's meant to be a callback to the suddenly disappearing uh, Castaferum dreadnought, uh, and that's why the arms are the way they are. But much like the two cannons available on the the standard Redemptor. They could have had these cannons attached to arms. The legs wouldn't have looked goofy. Or alternatively, what they could have done with the legs is bulked out this lower leg panel to make it look not so gangly. Yep. Yeah. You know? I think those two things would have fixed the issue instantly. I really enjoy the old, you know, um, shooting platform vibe that the Castrofemera uh, had. Yeah. Mm. But this one is just, just does, doesn't fit the primary aesthetics too much. And I'm going to die on this hill. I think um, the Redemptor kit should have already uh, ballistic um, options and melee options, not three different fucking kits. Just a nightmare, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, they make the sales that way. Right, let's shimmy on to the Tyranids. Uh, the Winged Tyranid Prime. And I, I, I really like the Ballista Dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> Each to their own, mate. Each to their own. So the Tyranid Prime, he looks fine. The thing is, I'm not a huge Terranid guy. There's only a few Terranid models that, like, scream uh, scream at me. No, you're a big human guy. Yes. <laughs> and um, this this is one of those that I find nothing wrong with it. There's just nothing about it that I like either. So, like, th this guy is really cool for a couple of reasons. One of those being is there's really been no unique dedicated Terranid Prime model for yeah. a long-ass time outside of a Terranid warrior with some, like, spikier bits on him. 
this guy just to fit that stat line really nicely. And with the wings, it adds to that a bit more. I, I just don't like the pose. Uh, if if, yeah. it, if the wings had been out like more f out outwards, now they're just hidden away. He doesn't look menacing. He just looks like he's jogging along. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the one of the two most important guys in the kit. The Neuro boy. Tyre. Big boy, the big boy. I didn't see the base on him before. Oh my god. We went over this guy. I mean, you see a little beheaded space marine down there. We went over this guy somewhat briefly with what we saw in the, in the cinematic trailer. Um, and he looked mm. fucking epic in that. And now I'm glad we've now got to have a better look at his little, um, what are they called? Little doodads. His little friends, yeah. His, his, <laughs> his little friends. His soul of crafty. Fingers and bongers. Mm -hmm. His soul very, of crafty yes. and the Cthulhu's, you know, it's just lovely. It really is. I want to see those two fight milk and cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, milk and cigarettes are the lion's two watches in the dark. <laughs> now, this guy, I have seen some size comparisons of, the Screamer Killer. This guy is huge, is he not? Fucking enormous. How, how big are we talking? Like Dreadnought size? Or like Dreadnought what? size, yeah. Oh, damn. That's super Ooh, cool. Oh, look at his Dreadnought. base for a minute. Chunky boy. Look at his base. And if we come back up here, look uh -huh. at this guy's base. It's the same base. Mm. Oh, fuck. So this guy is Juan. Mm -hmm. I really like it, but he has. Oh, he also has a kind of goofy pose. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, I love the pose. It's so wide He's and posing. To give you the worst hug no, of your life. No, 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 no. Okay, you're misunderstanding me. The, like, the one, the heroic pose. The one leg on the rope. That's <laughs> what the... <laughs> it's, it's iconic. <laughs> it, 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 he... He he kind of gives me the uh, hello my darling hello my honey. <laughs> 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 that that kind of vibe. The, the best scene from Spaceballs going man. He, he brings me a kind of hello my darling vibe to the table. <laughs> <laughs> brings a hello darling vibe to the fucking fourth tyrannic war. <laughs> <laughs> These guys, I feel similarly to the Winged Tyranid Prime. I think they're fine. Uh, you know, they, they, they're they going to serve the purpose. But again, there's nothing with these models that screams at me. This is my new favorite Tyranid model. Mini Lictors. They get the Lictors out of fine cast. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters. I genuinely like these guys. I think they look awesome. Yeah. I think they look I vibe great, with them a lot. honestly. Though I'm biased towards Lictors being the coolest Tyranid law thing just yeah. around. Uh, new Termagants. We actually reviewed these as well two episodes ago when we had the cinematic trailer and we got the previews of these uh, we can now see the little the little the little ripper swarms they're fine <laughs> again they serve the purpose they look cool they'll look yep. at, like they said in the actual uh, like they said at Warhammer Fest they'll look absolutely fine next to anyone who already owns the current gen of ripper swarms mm -hmm. you know it's, mm. it's fine the, the neurogaunts so these guys are interesting I think this is I think these guys are going to end up being the new sort of go-to tyranid screening unit mm. Mm. I suspect they will be extremely cheap on the board. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty. Do we have a points cost for them already? We might do. I suspect they'll be extremely I, I think cheap so. on the I board. Think, I think their little suicide bombers, the parasites on them, and they also uh, expand synapse range, so they're like a big utility pick. Yeah, but we know all we know for sure is that this guy in the middle with the slightly bigger one, if you somehow manage to take him out first through whatever means, then the rest of them are basically useless from that point onwards because he's kind of huh. controlling them because they're that sort of low maintenance. I see, I see. Uh, we've got a new Tyranid Mortar slash artillery unit, the bar the Barbagons. Uh, bar Barbagons? Barbagons. I like these guys a lot. Barbagons. I think they're cool. Yeah, they're, they're, they're super cool. They're, they're like miniature exocrines. I really vibe with the exocrine. Yeah. Yeah. They look cool. Yeah, they, they, they just have a vibe to them. I enjoy them. This guy I do like a lot because his maw is my, a maw. Probably my new favorite Tyranid model. It's, it's, it's the Tyranid Venom Crawler. <laughs> yes. It's uh, yeah, if, it's... We can, if we can if, if, if we if we can put up the picture with them uh, next to each other, it's actually yep. kind of silly how similar they are to each other. Yeah. yeah. I think it's great. I think it's comical. You see them like meet on the battlefield and be like the fucking Spider-Man meme, just going, "Wait, what?" Uh, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> no, exactly. No, no. My head canon is that it's just that this is the turn. It's uh, like version of the venom crawler after they consumed the venom crawler <laughs> uh, so uh, if you look at it like that it makes sense but uh, it's really cool either way. <laughs> the best part in this model is sticking a little snack of a space marine you see is just mm. i'm angry mm. <laughs> <laughs> no it's it's a very cool model uh, i like him very much gentlemen shall we move on to our main segment which is actually the reason why we got emmanuel on today uh, is to is to talk to Emmanuel and talk to him about some some green stuff things. 
<laughs> Whole things green stuff, yeah. Whole things green stuff, indeed. I thought we had him here to cook pasta for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he eats that raw. We already we already determined this at the start. <laughs> Next right, right. time. Next time. Okay, excellent. When you come to Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> so for context, everybody listening, Emmanuel here has been a good friend of ours for a, a year or so now. And he is one of the most exceptional kit bashers we know, uh, one of the most exceptional green stuff sculptors we know. We actually featured him on our eight succulent kit bashers episode. And uh, <laughs> his work in there, which you'll probably see some of in, in the next few minutes, is absolutely exceptional. And so we wanted to take this time to understand a bit about his work and understand a bit about how to improve as sculptors ourselves or yourself if you're listening. And, uh, and yeah, so I suppose in an effort to do that, uh, I have to ask, what other kit bashers slash sculptors have been the most help to you during your time as a kit basher slash sculptor? And are there any sort of specific works by that or those individuals that have really come to inspire you? Jeez, that's a, that's a tough one, you know. Um, I'm doing these thing as a hobby and work for three years now, four years. And I started in 2019, 2019. And... Um, there's been so many friends of mine that helped me during my 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 journey. But if I had to choose effectively the most influential over me over my style and over over my journey itself, over my my path of a sculptor, there would be most definitely the Forge Temple, mm. uh, Amphiaris, and it's it's not really that famous internationally, but in Italy a bit so. It's called Maximo, and is a, a fellow Italian of mine. You know, um, <laughs> start first things first. The Forge Temple, Hoke, uh, I think is called. Uh, is, is it's his name? It's just, it's just fucking bonkers, guys. So, basically, he I discovered him with Dark Angels from Oroserosy. But yeah. mm. he's done so many things over the years. You know, uh, Adeptus, Adeptus Titanicus, um, the Slanish Army, um, uh, Aslanish Carnival of Demons, um, the Epic Scale Adeptus Mechanicus, or the Lord of the Rings, the Aradrim and Go uh, Gonzo and Dale and the Nazgul of, of, from the Gold Dur. There is just so oh, yeah. many things. And would you say amongst sort of the stuff that the Forge Temple has done, is there any sort of one or two models that like really stick out to you? And you look at that and you go, fuck me, this is absolutely astounding work. D model that embodies his work and his skills is must be the Saturnian kit is done. Is <clears throat> basically scratch build it, sculpted the pauldrons and um, put together all all the single um, bits from the legs to the torso to the head to the arms um, using parts from other kits and then making a cast out of it and then casting different kits that then he shared <laughs> with his fan. For fuck's sake, how can you be so goddamn cool? Just, just Hulk, if you are listening, chill out. <laughs> just chill. <laughs> God damn it. So what you're saying is this model here is essentially scratch built. Yeah. From the ground up Damn. in its entirety. From the ground Wow. King That's up. fucking gnarly. Holy smokes. Every single Dark Angel model I work on and share, it has roots on his army. His style, his, his painting style, his, his kit bashing and sculptory style, everything f from me came from him just that important for me and what about um and Ferris. and what about and uh, how do you pronounce that and for and fiaris and i think he should be and fiaris but i may be mistaken <laughs> so i know who and fiaris is and i think i think a lot of other people do too uh. he's done an awful lot of things i think the biggest thing he had or at least maybe the most well-known thing off the top of my head was a while back he made uh, this I'm going to put on the screen oh, now. Yeah. This is a commission he made for Chapter Master Valrak of a 40 kified, very aged uh, Rogal Dawn. Yeah, old man uh, Which Rogal is Dawn. splendid. 
Mm. That that thing is super cool. Ludicrously fucking nice looking thing. And is there anything from Anfaris that sticks out to you as like really special? As a Dark Angel fan, I just couldn't say anything but Asmodai. Asmodai <laughs> from the Angels of Darkness cover is just one on one to the artwork. I couldn't pick anything more accurate from anyone. There's a Requiem 82, another Dark Angel artist and Kit Bashan sculptor, has done two some Asmodai things and but Madame Ferris, look at that. Just look at the sculpting. Wow. Jeez. I, while the Forge Temple is my, um, is, I think I am an equal to him. I will constantly look at him as a source of inspiration, but I think I could reach him. Uh, Anfiaris is my god. There's nothing <laughs> else but a god. To, it could not be anything else but that. I asked him multiple times to adopt me and teach me <laughs> the secrets. Well, someday, someday, my dreams will come true. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's such a seamless mix that Anfarius does when he, he, he uses already established bits and um, sculpting. You know, it, it, some of his stuff that's been painted either by himself, question mark, and definitely by others. Uh, again, referencing that um, Chapter Master Valrak model that he did of Rogel Dawn all painted up and complete, or his uh, Deceiver model, Jesus. all painted up and complete. You yeah. can't really, once it's painted, you cannot tell where the the green stuff starts and where it ends. I actually want to point out an Amphara's model that I love, real quick, whilst we're on go, topic go. of him. Of course. This isn't about made... you, man. <laughs> 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 he made this, and I'm going to put it on the screen now. This is wow. a corn yeah, Leviathan Dreadnought. Now, with my green stuff sculpting, I've done some decent Nurgle stuff. I'll just quickly jump on the screen now. I have always Self struggled. Again. Of course I will. I have always <laughs> struggled with uh, doing trim. And seeing him do this, the sheer amount of trim he's done on this and how clean it is and how wonderful it is, is absolutely beautiful. I wish there were churches so I could go and pray to Amphiaris. <laughs> But he even made interchangeable guns for it and then uh, cornified those oh. to an extent as well. Holy mm. shit. <laughs> it's, it's so impressive. And you can see at the back end sort of popping out, looking at his rear, he's put those sort of chaos exhausts on it. But it's such an exceptional model. I think it would be... If, if I won the lottery someday and I wanted to commission a green stuff sculptor, Obviously, I would do. I would do you first, Emmanuel. <laughs> but, but assuming, assuming you were too busy, assuming course, you were too busy, I, I would reach. I would reach out to Anfaris because this stuff is bonkers. He's currently working on uh, what I believe is a true scale custodian. Oh. I think it's going to be some more, more of his more subtle work here and there, just to sort of size him up so that when he's put next to those tenth edition Terminators, he's, they're still going to stand out. Um, but his stuff is truly exceptional. In fact, I think we have to feature this on our next big uh, Kit Bashers uh, podcast episode Absolutely. list. Absolutely. Absolutely, How yes. the hell does he get the green stuff to be so goddamn smooth? Now, oh, I know that. I know that because I follow ah. Amphiaris on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I, I should talk maybe on the next bit because it's just mineral oil. Mineral oil. Mm. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> so if you if you start using uh, mineral oil instead of water or spit on your tools, it's gonna be silky smooth. So the next one is um, a bit of um, it's it's diff difficult to explain why it's so important to me because of course is a good painter and a good good basher, but is not on the level of the previous first uh, previous two mm -hmm. because. Uh, it doesn't do that much sculpting or kit bash. Just the minimum he the thinks yeah. is uh, proper for his for his armies. And but uh, Maximo is part of a of a group of YouTubers on on the Italian YouTube. And during my first years as a kit basher and sculptor, uh, during my first year in Warama, he literally taught me what kit bash means. Um, ah. I uh, first saw a kitbash from his, uh, his channel, and it was a, a Warcry Barbarian converted to a Necromunda Ganga, and 
it blew my mind that we use green stuff to integrate um, bits and all the uh, kids parts and it's just it was the concept of having no boundaries whatsoever to be able to do whatever you want just limited to your fantasy and your imagination and skills so we can certainly attribute an awful lot of well having you here with us and and the thing the work you've done to to this individual absolutely fucking yes <laughs> i'm normally really critical of using adeptus titanicus parts on models but i do <laughs> love the legs he's put on this redemptor mm. because again as a dark angel that extra little bit of herald not heraldry that extra little bit of um ornateness yeah really really sort of sings to it I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I didn't even notice that because I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's just where it's supposed to be." It was, it was damn. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a common thing I, I find an awful lot amongst um, some of my favorite kit bashes is that their their kit bashing uh, is just on par with their painting as well. Yeah. You know, so like take this um, this little beast of Nurgle thing as well. You can see that even though he's an exceptional kit basher, he's not a slouch when it comes to painting either, and it's a really mm. lovely thing. I mean, obviously, Anf Anfaris is unmatched, but we don't see an awful lot of his models get painted. Of course, uh, no. And then transfer over to this, and everything gets painted. Is is uh, uh, I I I never met him, but I will definitely next year, maybe on a on a convention or something. And yeah. he's is a no pile of shame guy, so everything he <laughs> do he do he paints. So it, I love it. As few and far between, those are. <laughs> shut up! <laughs> shut, shut up! I'm gonna I'm not gonna paint anything because I'm not good enough. Don't paint anything, anyways. <laughs> Lies. Shut up. Lies. <laughs> shut up. Uh, I've been curious, man. What exactly got you into like forty k, and has it sort of done anything to you for the past few couple of years? That's that's the question, you know. So, mm -hmm. when I was little, little kids, I had my brothers play Dawn of War on their PCs, and I was there uh, beside them watching these Space Marines and Blood Ravens fought over the Necrons, over Karava, and the other systems of the Dawn of War series, Dawn of War One, and all the other from two, um, com so retribution. I just was so in love with the setting. Yeah. I didn't know anything, but I vividly remember the first time my brother explained, uh, tried to explain to me what an Ive City was, and I yeah. I was a kid then. I uh, like from five to seven years, and I couldn't exactly grasp the concept of having uh, that grim dark uh, feeling not just to the armies but to the whole setting yeah. and the hobby itself came a fair long while uh, just three years ago as i said because um in italy there was rama conquest that it was um, a weekly um uh, there were issues where they sold um, Dark Imperium models, basically. Um, and I jumped in the hobby uh, hype with that. And then there was Endometers, and from that I never stopped. Mm. And I yeah. don't think I will ever stop, because this is actually <laughs> my job right now. So yeah. just for, thank, thanks to the Zone of War series, thanks to my brother, thanks to my brothers, I actually and uh, met some of the most awesome people in the uh, my life and most especially i think i have pushed my artistic skills to a limit i didn't yeah. think i could mm -hmm. well, i think that's a really common thing that a lot of people have in have had in the last sort of 10 or 20 years i know that a huge colossal portion of people who are into warhammer now you know found their entry through one of the the two first dawn of war games at at some stage i mean oh, for sure quite curiously enough we actually discussed it in our last episode a little bit how not what got us into it but the first thing that got me and the guys who do the podcast talking to each other was actually a session on uh, 2011 space marine oh yeah where where we all sort of jumped in and played that for about a, a couple of hours you know so it, it's it's a really sort of normal thing to have where these the, the sort of alternative 40k medias outside of the typical hobby stuff really bring people into the fold. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's that's really special, you know, that the, the the sheer amount of facets that the hobby has and the way it sort of grasps different people in different ways. And it's always really lovely to speak to someone 
And it's like, oh, oh, I'm into Warhammer. Oh, they're into Warhammer too. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I play Dawn of War. And it's like, oh, have you ever tried doing that? Have you ever tried making the models? Oh no, I haven't done that. And then before you know it, they're building up a starter box, and yeah. it's it's straight down to the sinkhole from there. In, into the plastic crack hole they go. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel yeah. like a lot of people have very sort of wholesome childhood entries into 40k. That's no, and then have no idea what they're actually getting into. Yeah, definitely. Then the question. Uh, comes to what sort of advice would you give to well a beginner that's looking to improve their green stuff epoxy sculpting for miniatures um and uh, what are you uh, what's your go-to tools for sculpting that you'd recommend i get this question a lot mostly from the in real life people that i met because yeah. some of them do the basic they like to do enjoy to do so um, making box art models um, just doing the the bare minimum because they enjoy that part and I yep. couldn't be more happier for them but I get this question a lot so the most important piece of advice I could give every beginner would be to slow down there's mm. nobody on your trail trying to compare your work to your to your masters to your masterclass uh, inspirational artists just take a breath and work on sculpting as you would do as a school assignment as a work yeah. assignment so you need to learn how to do something before you try to do that it's very scientific really you to achieve that certain shape you need to understand how the epoxy would work to your tools you are uh, currently using I think that's a problem I've had as a, as a sculptor that I've only in the last couple of weeks even have started to overcome. I've been sculpting for about two years now, um, and I'm not even close to your level, but it's only recently that I have... <laughs> I, can, I can make boils and blood and guts, and that's about it. You ask me to make a smooth surface or a piece of cloth, I am as, I'm as bad as someone who's never touched green stuff in their life. But the thing is... I was always rushing. I was always finishing something and then looking to start the next bit and dunking my thumb in the work that hadn't finished curing. Exactly. Uh, and I think that's a common problem that a lot of people have, but it's, I think what you're trying to describe, if, if I may be so bold, is it's <laughs> to understand the nature of what you're working with. Try to understand how the epoxy is going to react to certain things. Try to understand that mix of green and green and blue and trying to find out, you know, where is the right sort of soft point for what exactly you're working on, you know? Absolutely, uh, yes. And I think that's I think that's something I really wish I did. I really wish when I started I had spent more, not just more time working on bits, but more time not working on them, more time in between going away from a model and coming back to it and, and trying to understand what my next step was than trying to sort of burst through the model in a single, uh, a single splash of work. Don't don't be afraid to let green stuff cure, you know? Just mm -hmm. let it sit there for a couple of hours. Don't think about it. Do something else. That's my yeah. go-to advice. What we were saying? Play Dawn of War. With our friends. Well, I think I also think that's a, like a very wholesome answer in a way. I mean, and it applies to so, so, so much more, actually, than just, well, green stuff and hobby. I mean... Uh, I don't know, speaking from an artistic perspective, I can see the, just don't rush into things. Just take the time to learn it properly. I mean, there, there, there's nothing wrong with that. To answer your, the, the second part of Mitch's question about your My Tools, do yourself a favor and buy silicon brush. Mm. Every mm. kind, try everything, every shape, everything. Though, although it may look strange, do that buy those they are perfect for beginners for experts for everyone but um, while i do that when i have perfectly good fingers to push into molds <laughs> <laughs> i've heard from uh, another kit bash sculptor whose name eludes me at the moment that he really recommends using uh toothpicks mm. how do you feel about that is that something you'd recommend toothpicks at all i think i remember valbion using them in some of his tutorials I think you should know what to do with them because they have um, 
they of course don't have a um, smooth finish to them. They uh, they have a bit of uh, of course of wood texture, and they are not that sharp either. Uh, some of other tools you can get from metal. So so, but um, those are also the most um, important features they have. They are grainy and they are a bit uh, coarse. So if you mm, wish to sculpt a um, rough edge of a fur of a cloak or something like that, you should definitely try. But about this, try everything. Everything yeah. can be a sculpting tool. Mm. It's all about textures. So, so I can use my penis. <laughs> <laughs> and your fingers. <laughs> Ah, ah, that too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so out of all the models you've created for yourself or as a commission over the last few years, is there any sort of like one or two that you're really the most proud of? Look at my awesome um, Saturn Imprator that I, you showed on the last episode of the boss, <laughs> uh, podcast. But I want, I would, I would go for the um, uh, humility card there and say my favorite model I work in the last two years or so, is a single um, 30k Mark III Tactical Marine. Mm. This Mark III Tactical Marine. Exactly. I hate that guy. And <laughs> 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 of course you do, you fucking twat. <laughs> so <laughs> the, the old squad, I think I did a, I think I did a good job. Um, obviously inspired by the Fort Temple, but this single dude, the frontline dude, this, the front model, it's so simple, but yeah. it tells so much. It has the the uh, uh, the flower ornamentation that the Dark Angel from the Over series he have those uh, little green stuff bit on the legs. I'm talking about uh -huh. those that Forge World spam everywhere on the Dark Angel's <laughs> models, and it's awesome because it gives character to the texture of the uh, the armor of the Dark Angels. Um, I did um, a page long um, study on the Forge World design. Um, of all the Dark Angels, and this beat showed up the most. The first time I sculpted Chainmail was on this model, and I um, went to such extent to have um, a friend of mine, um, 3D artist, to merge two different STL uh, files in the shoulder pad you see. It's a Mark III with a um, um. custom um, uh, um, uh, um, winged sword from the Archangels that is yeah. reminiscent to the um, second edition Dark Angels characters such as Azrael and Asmodai that have this whole uh, shoulder pad engulfed in the wings of the sword. So it's the apotheosis of my Dark Angels characters, really. No, I can totally yeah. get behind that. I, th I think it's, it's nice that you have decided to pick out a model that is humble, because if we can just take a moment to glance very briefly <laughs> over Emmanuel's roster, and I'll, throughout the entirety of this video, I'm going to be showcasing all sorts of stuff. So you'd have seen all of it already if you're watching. So many of his models, so many of your models, are overwhelmingly grand. Uh, and some of them are very extra as well. <laughs> but you can see when you look at this uh, single Mark III Marine, uh, you can see the the scratchings of where a lot of it may have began or where you've had to use sort of skills that you've picked up over the years you know uh, actually not just with the marine but with the squad in general as well and might yeah. i point out i do believe that these marines and this one mark three marine is sat atop a tortuga bay torso and legs <laughs> yeah you have a keen eye my friend <laughs> yes i i am a vividly enjoyer of all tortuga base kits I am um, as a, I stay in uh, Ukraine in the conflicts of Ukraini and all of that, and they are Ukrainian. So they they ship me um, a bunch of Mark III models when they were at war. We know that our beloved Red, who is who is away for the moment, he is a huge proprietor of Tortuga minis, and he would be astounded to hear you say that. He absolutely adores Tortuga. He's been in touch on and off uh, on a couple of occasions with the guy who actually runs the whole thing, and he, he feels very personally... Uh, very He feels very personally responsible sometimes for 
making sure that he's contributing to them enough. And, and it's the same for us. I mean, we know other channels have supported openly Tortuga Bay. I mean, forgetting the name and the connotations of calling your your store Tortuga. <laughs> uh, everywhere from, from, you know, Red all the way to you to Midwinter Minis has... Uh, spoken spoken of all of the virtues of supporting Tortuga Bay. So no, we, we absolutely get that and we, we, we do continue to wish them the best. We hope Hell that their, yeah. their new line of uh, Indomitus pattern Terminator bodies, which I'll put on the screen now, uh, of which do I well. Am extremely excited for. Uh, yes. We know, so we know. You've been talking about it for days. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah. The coolest part about this company is that I uh, threw it up um, a bunch of times about their kits asking them yeah. maybe to um, uh, separate torsos from legs. And they did that. Yeah. They oh. constantly, mm. here out of the community, constantly, every single kit, they upgrade them so many times. I love them. Just love them. Yeah, they definitely they deserve support. <laughs> My boy. What's like, your, um, what's like your favorite thing to sculpt? Like what gives you the most happiness in life other than your green stuff wife you made from hand? <laughs> <laughs> um, the most, the most in enjoyable part uh, would be fur. Definitely. Oh, no, 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 of, of your but... models, not your wife. <laughs> okay, then I would say cloaks. Oh. God damn it, you <laughs> had me there. <laughs> you fucking twat. So... <laughs> I think uh, retroactively changing my, my answer, they would be really cloaks. They are so easy and give so much character to your, yeah. to your minis. Do cloaks, guys. Learn how to do them because they are just a sheet of green stuff and many sausages over all the <laughs> What would someone watching this need to do if they wanted to commission you, uh, or commission you for your work, for their own faction? It's simple as hitting me on the DMs of Instagram. Just that. T tell is that in Instagram, Twitter? Um, Instagram, yes. And just for anyone watching, Emmanuel's handle, just on Instagram, I'll put it on the screen now, Emmanuel of the Lions, this guy, this profile picture, if you click on a profile called Emmanuel of the Lions, you see all of this wonderful green stuff. You smash this message button. You, you slide into his DMs. You, you... You, you say something about pasta and green stuff. It's and very uh, slippy already. <laughs> <laughs> rumor has it, now this isn't sponsored, but rumor has it that if you ask him to make you a sex toy uh, with the code <laughs> Starters Anonymous, uh, he'll, he'll make you a, a life-sized uh, Hatsune Miku. Yep. Absolutely, with a 50% <laughs> discount. I'm, I might, I might use that. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would, you depraved son of a bitch. I think it'd be a disservice to Red while he's not here. But just to mention the, the very fucking cool Iron Warriors Havocs that Emmanuel here made for him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love those. Well, I'll be putting those on the screen throughout, but I will highlight them right now. These are, there's some Havoc models that Red actually commissioned Emmanuel for a number of weeks and months ago for his Iron Warriors warband. Uh, called the Rust Core, and they have got to be some of the coolest Havocs I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. Definitely agreed. And I, I also want to highlight the the one uh, the one armed uh, bandit yep. you made for me. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> My first commission ever. Master of executions. Yep. Oh, really? Well, I, right. You, you keep telling me this, and I keep forgetting it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <very much. laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it was a blast to paint that one. Uh, so. In all seriousness, though, what are you working on right now? A friend of mine, Traitorous Loyalty, has asked me to work on a bunch of stuff. And lately, I'm uh, starting to piece together a commission for Merrier Astalan of the Dark Angels of Reseresi. Whoa. Inspired from the artwork, uh, wow. the most famous artwork, you know, with him, with all the cloaks around him and the, all the, the fallen angels around him. Pretty cool, I'm going to share with you. I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try to achieve one on one level of uh, details like I'm Ferris did uh, on his asthma day. Excellent. God damn. I can't wait to see it. Holy crap. I need to get my commission of you sorted for my Raven Guard boy. That needs to happen. <laughs> we'll do. We definitely do. <laughs> That's it. So if you do want a commission from Emmanuel, don't waste your time. Get in there now before Aaron does and make him wait. <laughs> oh, I'll get in there. Yep. I will. I'll get in, in there. In fact, <laughs> if, you, if you get a commission from Emmanuel and you get in there before Aaron does, I will PayPal you a tenner <laughs> no. for making Aaron wait. 
He was waiting for so goddamn long. <laughs> Poor boy. He deserved that, though. He deserved that. He deserved it. Most two definitely deserved that. put a slot aside for me. So I'll, I'll cook his pasta and he'd hate that. <laughs> but now, speaking of food, what the, what, Emmanuel, you must know this out of all your infinite wisdoms, but what, what does the green stuff taste like? Or at least your green stuff. Because you spit on that shit all the time. You must have like, put it in your mouth one time. I would say it tastes like broken dreams. And oh, ecstasy. <laughs> uh, so if you're gonna uh, get a trip to the hospital, real quick, it's a whole pack straight away. Or, or mm-hmm. don't do that mm-hmm. and use for uh, for sculpting and improve your sculpting skills <laughs> and be better uh, and something like that. Yeah. Instructions unclear. Ate an entire pack of uh, green stuff. <laughs> I ate all the blue and didn't taste like bubble gum. <laughs> oh, you goblins, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you everyone for joining into this episode. Uh, Emmanuel, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to plug all of your stuff as much as we can. Uh, keep it up and send us some photos of those work in progress things you're working on now so I can feature them in the episode, please. I will. Uh, I would love that. I, will. I would love that. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching, and uh, we'll see, see you next you. time. Bye bye. Oh, hello, little ones. I see you've made it to the end of the video. How delectable. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to interact with us yourself, you can join our Discord where Tom, Moots, Red, and I are only a message away. We'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, as well as follow our social media on Twitter and Instagram, all linked in the description. It would be great to hear from you, as I'm sure you'd like to see more of us, and especially me. Mm.